I also want to state um, that we really need to think about um, whether or not these gene editing tools will truly quote, democratize genomics. The term democratization of technologies is something that I take issue with because any system that benefits most will still disenfranchise my minoritized group. The system of benefits most is one that's going to continue to the uh, further erasure of small populations like indigenous peoples. So we should not be advocating for, so we should be advocating for equity as opposed to democratization. And these two terms are not synonymous. We also have to understand that biomarkers who disenfranchise indigenous peoples in the global South have you know, been made openly available and publicly available. And the first entities to benefit first have been drug companies and pharmaceutical companies and the people to benefit last have been the very same indigenous peoples that provided that data to begin with. It is really interesting. In 2007, a New York Times reporter went back to um, a small tribe in the Amazon uh, and basically asked this community, what was it that researchers promised you in exchange for your DNA? And they basically said, we were promised medicines and therapies. And they were shocked to learn that access to the genomic information was being sold for $75 to $85 a vial um, by researchers. And this is directly analogous, or there's some parallels with um, the story of Henrietta Lacks, whose HeLa cells and cervical cancer cells have been used um, without her or her family's expressed knowledge and consent and being and has been used to advance oncological and a number of biomedical innovations but only recently has Johns Hopkins uh, um, University and Medical Center come to even try to incorporate her, her descendants into that conversation. Uh, so we really have to consider like when we're talking about the biological uh, extraction of biological materials for advancing science, who are the peoples that are benefiting first? And I'll 